of all the, the holidays, I can't think of any that have the food significance of Christmas Eve and that La Vigilia. <laughs> Well, there's supposed to be seven fishes which go along with the seven sacraments on the seven days of the week. There's, a, there's always some kind of a connection. We'd be sitting there having a Christmas Eve dinner, and there'd always be someone said, Do we have seven fish? I don't know, let's count them. The scariest, you know. And I remember one time where we, we counted out 12, and another time um, six, and someone said, It's not right. We forgot about the anchovies in the can. We had anchovies with the salad, okay. Our anchovies went in the pasta aioli, so we, we hit the seven. Some people have 13 fish, the apostles and Jesus. Others have 12, uh, they forget Jesus. Or, you got Judas in there, why have fish after him? Uh, every family's got a story about this. La Vigilia, the vigil is the, the festival. And uh, the, the, on the night before Christmas, the Italian tradition is to abstain from eating meat. Uh, uh, all kinds of, of, of fish around Christmas time that I never saw before. Cannot to be believed. We party your grandma's fulfilling a wish. She'll be kicking off the season with a table of fish. We're at the supermarket holding up the car. We got the squid, the schmelz, the bacala, which is a, a dry cod. Hit somebody over the head with it, which is like paper. You had to soak it for a month before. Now, eel is a big Christmas tradition in our in our family, and I won't eat it. I can just picture them in the kitchen sink. I can picture her cutting them, cutting the heads off, and the bodies would still be moving, and cutting them into pieces, and they'd still be writhing, and putting it in the sauce. And then I would whisper in her ear, I'll eat scrambled eggs tonight, because I, I never liked the fishes. I love it today. Of course, it depends on where you are in Italy and also uh, how religious your, your family is. There's some places in Italy where roast pork is served on Christmas Eve. No fish whatsoever. Um, if you came from a village that was inland or higher up in elevation, um, chances are you had bacala, the salt cod. If you didn't have a lot of money, that might be the only fish that you would have. Uh, if you live more near the coast, you'd have more fish. So to try to go back and look at Italy as a nation and try to come up with some uh, collective mentality for a dinner of seven fish is, uh, is, is uh, a futile exercise. A simple feast like a simple event like that uh, hap comes to America, and before you know it, you have everything that ever ever grew in the ocean. Uh, coming out on your table to, to celebrate, you know, the, the, the abundance and the, and, and the tradition for whatever it might be. I was thinking this year, maybe doing something a little different. Very little different. But then I was wondering, I don't know if my family would like it. So I think I want to do the exact same meal that I had when I was very young. It's just tradition. You have to do it. Join the Monish Lay. So, wind of the night, up and away, we make our rounds on Christmas Day. Shite down LA, Miami, Federal Hill, North End, a little Italy. Around the world, but we're home by three. For lasagna and Peugeot with the family. John, I'm going to tell you a story about pasta. When I lived in Malta, um, and I was going out there, one of the things that you get as a U.S. ambassador is you get a staff at your home, at your residence. And they had a British chef. And I remember saying to the embassy staff before I went out there, please replace the chef. You know, and, and when I get there, I'll hire somebody. Well, they didn't do it. And I got there. And he was a great guy. But he could cook Italian for anything. And there was a great restaurant in Rome that I enjoyed. And I personally paid for it. I had this guy sent over there to learn from the Italians in the kitchen how to cook. I even brought him back to America with me when I came back for a holiday. I had him in the Florentine Grill, I had him in Capriccio's, and I had him in the Aurora Club. Really, it's a true story. And he got a little better, but he still couldn't do it. Well, I didn't want to relieve him because now we got attached to each other and we liked him, but he ended up leaving himself. In Malta, where the food wasn't really all that good, there was one restaurant that my wife found, God bless her, 
and the owner of the restaurant was Sicilian. And we would go there all the time, and the food was great. And I asked them, do you know of anybody? And they said, yes, we have a brother in Sicily. And I flew him in again at my expense, flew him into Malta, it was an 18-minute flight, for him to cook for us. And I said, looked at my wife and said, oh, this is the guy for us. And every night, there would be three pastas on the table. You'd have pasta with tomato, you'd have eggplant pasta, you'd have penne vodka, you'd have abriata, you'd have magigiana, you'd have all the different sauces. I came home, I gained weight, again.